Hello, I'm Jim Van Burek. I'm a geologist with the province of Manitoba, the Geological Survey. And uh, I'm sitting right at the contact between two geological rock formations in Manitoba. This is the contact uh, of the Winnipeg, which uh, I'm occupying that same level. And directly above my head here is a ledge of the Red River Formation, the Doghead uh, member. This Doghead member uh, meets uh, just the uh, sand at uh, the level, uh, just about the top of my head, uh, over uh, to my uh, left-hand side. This is an unconsolidated sand that's uh, orange in color. And uh, it is a sand that was deposited at the uh, ocean level uh, back about 550 million years ago. So this sand is about 550 million years old, extremely old sand. The limestone above my head here is younger. Uh, it might be in the range of 500 million years old. So there might be a difference of close to 30 to 50 million years of time uh, that uh, is separating these two uh, formations. So there is a bit of a, a, a nonconformity or break uh, between uh, these two. And this sand is the same sand that you find uh, at uh, Grand Beach in uh, Lake Winnipeg. Only that sand is mixed with some glacial sand, whereas this is a, a relatively uh, mature, clean sand. Uh, although it's rusted here, that's because of iron. But the sand grains themselves, if you put it under a microscope, uh, would be extremely uh, rounded and uh, uh, smooth and uh, they uh, have tumbled in the bottom of this ocean, like I said, around uh, 550 million years ago. And one of the tests that I can do for the sand is to see if it fizzes, uh, like the overlying limestone. Uh, the uh, Winnipeg sand is non-calcareous, so if I take a little bit of the sand, and I'll scoop some fresh material over here, and if I put it on my hand, and put some acid on it, it should not fizz. And there is, if anything, a very tiny amount, but no, I would say no fizz at all on that. In contrast, if I took a piece of this limestone, which has fallen from the overhang, and if I put some acid on here, if it's a limestone, it should fizz. And there is quite a bit of fizzing going on on this. So this tells me that we are right at this contact. As a geologist, I love to find contacts in the field between two different formations and members. And uh, this is the kind of thing that I sort of uh, live for in a sense to uh, find these kinds of breaks in the geological record where you go from one lithologic unit to another. And uh, this Red River Formation is actually uh, related to the Tyndall Stone that you see on the buildings and houses in the Winnipeg area and even right across Canada in many places. Uh, it's not the same uh, uh, good stone that they use uh, from the Selkirk member which is higher in the sequence. Uh, if that sand or that uh, limestone was still here uh, ge in geological time, it might be another uh, two, three hundred meters above my head. Uh, so that is a much uh, younger uh, uh, member uh, of the Red River Formation, that Selkirk member. These uh, beds in this dog head are very slabby, uh, very thin. Uh, they split quite easily horizontally. Uh, even though it's a mottled uh, uh, dolomitic limestone, it uh, still uh, it doesn't have the kind of bonding like you see on the larger blocks found in the Selkirk member uh, that form the Tyndall stone beds at Garson. So geologically those are much younger, maybe in the range of uh, 500 million years in age uh, and maybe even younger, 475. But uh, this is a, a really interesting spot to visit. We're on the um, uh, northern uh, most point of uh, Hecla Island in Lake Winnipeg. Uh, it's in the south basin of, of the lake. 
and it, there aren't many places where you will actually see this kind of contact uh, preserved. There is one uh, similar on Black Island further to the east, but uh, at this particular spot, uh, which is in a short walking distance uh, to the west of the campground on Hecla Island.